refused me a parting kiss, saying we should be engaged before that. And just with a distant clasp of hand, she bade me good night as I brought her home from the skating rink or the revival. No sooner did my departed footsteps die away, and then Lucius Anderton stole in at the window or took a riding behind his spanking team of bays into the country. The shock of it made me settle down. And I took all the money I got from my father's estate into the cane factory to get the job of head accountant and lost it all. Then I knew I was one of life's fools whom only death would treat as the equal of other men, which made me feel like a man. Over and over again he used to ask me, while buying the wine or the beer, first in Peoria, and then later Chicago, Denver, Frisco, and New York, how I happened to live a life. promise of marriage from a rich man. But that was not it at all. Suppose a boy steals an apple from the tray at a grocery store. They all begin to call him a thief. The editor, minister, judge, all the people, a thief, a thief, a thief, wherever he goes and he can't get work and he can't get bread without stealing. Why? The boy will steal. It's the way the people regard the theft of the apple that makes the boy what he is. When my moustache curled, my hair was black, and wore tight trousers, and a diamond stud, 
I was an excellent neighbor fart. It took many a trick. But when the gray hairs appeared, a whole new generation of girls oh, laughed at me. Oh, why? What are you doing? Not fearing me. <laughs> and I had no exciting adventures. When I was all but a shot of a heartless devil. But only drabby affairs, warmed over affairs. Other days and other men. And time went on until I lived at May's restaurant, partaking short orders, a grey, untidy, toothless, discarded. And rural Don Juan. There's a mighty shade here who sings of the one named Beatrice. And I see now that the force that made him great drove me to the dregs of life.